In this three-part video, we will be covering the basics of FLAC and how the equations of motion are solved. In addition, we will also be introduced to the scripting language available in FLAC called FISH. The goal of these videos is to provide the basics of FLAC so that users of the program will better understand the numerical details of the program as they conduct geotechnical analysis modeling. In part one of this video, a background into numerical modeling will be provided. Next, in part two, we will cover the numerical procedures used in FLAC. Finally, part three, the scripting language FISH will be presented. To begin, consider a two-dimensional continuum. As an example, consider the slope shown in which the response will be determined numerically. To accomplish this, this continuous body is first replaced by a number of elements. Focusing on a single element, the nodes define the key points on that element. The elements in the complete mesh are connected together by the element sides and nodes. For this numerical mesh, the goal is to determine the unknown displacements U that will bring the body into equilibrium. In the simplest form, the objective is to find the solution to the equilibrium equation, which is the sum of the forces equal to the mass times acceleration, where U double dot is simply the second derivative of displacement U with respect to T. Now the force F can be separated into internal and external forces. As an example, consider a mass connected to a rigid base through a spring. A single force F1 is applied to the mass. In this example, the external force is included as one, the weight of the mass M times G, and two, the applied force F1. The internal force is related to the deformation of the spring U and is calculated as the stiffness of the spring K times the displacement U. The equation to solve is the sum of the forces, which is equal to the internal force plus the external force, which is equal to the mass times the second time derivative of the displacement. In the previous example, the internal force was linearly related to the displacement. More generally, the internal forces may be represented as a function of the displacement. In equation form, the internal force can be set equal to some parameter such as n, which is a function of the displacement. This relationship is related to the so-called constitutive law and may have a relationship such as shown to the left. At each node, the equation of the sum of the forces equal to mass times acceleration needs to be solved. There are several methods to be able to do this numerically. Three methods will be discussed next. One, the finite element method. Two, the finite difference method. And three, the finite volume method. In the finite element method, the displacement field for an element is represented by the sum for all nodes A, a multiplication of the shape functions NA times the nodal displacements DA. Such shape functions may vary along the element with a linear function, quadratic function, or others. For each element, a stiffness matrix will be determined. The stiffness matrices are assembled into a global stiffness matrix K. For a general problem in which acceleration and velocity are not zero, the matrix equation becomes the mass matrix M times unknown accelerations, plus the damping matrix C times unknown velocities, plus the stiffness matrix K times the unknown displacements. This relationship on the left-hand side equals the known nodal forces F. In the case of a static problem, the nodal accelerations and velocities are zero, and the unknown nodal displacements are calculated by inverting the stiffness matrix and multiplying this inverted matrix by the known nodal forces. If the acceleration and velocity are not zero, and the solution is to be determined with respect to time, a time marching scheme is used where the displacement at one time is approximated by the sum of the previous displacement plus the increment in displacement for that time step. An example time march scheme that may be employed is the finite difference method. Another method to find the unknown displacements is the finite difference method. With this method, displacements can only be determined for a rectangular domain, such as shown. For each element, the strains are approximated using the finite difference approximation. An example equation is shown here for the normal strain in the horizontal direction. The finite difference approximation for strains is used between all nodes. With this approximation and other important considerations leads to an equilibrium equation at each node identified by a variable such as i and j for the row and column numbers respectfully. This equation is mass times acceleration equals force. These equations can be solved for the nodes with time using the finite difference approximation. 
For example, the central difference approximation is shown here. A third method is the finite volume method. As shown, this method can be applied to rectangular and non-rectangular domains. For each element in the domain, the displacement gradient, that is strain, is calculated via the Gauss divergence theorem. For example, the displacement gradient along the x direction is shown here. This equation can be approximated for any shape, for example, the triangular element shown. Using this approximation for each node, and with other important consideration, leads to a similar equation as with the previous method. That is, an equilibrium equation at each node identified by i and j, with mass times acceleration equals force. These equations can be solved with time using the finite difference method. For example, the central difference approximation is shown here. We have just considered briefly three numerical methods to solve the equation of motion. Comparing the methods, a few differences are worth noting and are highlighted in this table. First, in terms of possible element shapes, the finite element method and finite volume method allow any shape to be considered, whereas the finite difference method only allows for rectangular elements. In terms of the variation of displacement across an element, the finite element method allows any shape function to be considered or any variation in shape, whereas the finite difference method and the finite element method utilize linear variation. In terms of a global stiffness matrix needing to be formed, only in the finite element method is this needed. In terms of the time marching scheme, both implicit and or explicit schemes may be allowed. Next, in terms of computational effort per time step, the finite element method is quite high, given that a global stiffness matrix is required, whereas the finite difference method and the finite volume method is lower. In terms of the time step required for numerical stability, the finite element method is large to small, depending on various considerations, whereas the time step required for both the finite difference method and the finite element method is small. As highlighted here, there are both advantages and disadvantages with all the methods considered. For many analysts, a numerical analysis program will be used to solve for the unknown displacements, strains, stresses, forces, and so on. An example of three such programs are FLAC, Plaxis, and OpenSeas. There are several similarities, but also notable differences. One important distinction is the numerical method approach used. FLAC uses the finite volume method, whereas Plaxis and OpenSeas use the finite element method. The advantages and disadvantages of these methods for which were covered on the previous slide. This completes part one of this three-part video. In the next video, part two, the specific details on the numerical procedures used in FLAC will be presented.